Hello and welcome back to part 8 of the uh, top down shooter tutorial. In this video we're going to make it so that the player can finally uh, shoot the gun. Okay, so we've got that screen shake happening, we've made all the scenes that are associated with it, this bullet case and this tracer fire, and now we're going to make it so that the um, player can hold it down and this tracer fire actually comes out. There's one thing I didn't do on this tracer fire, uh, and it was to go to the mesh instance, click on the mesh, and then down here select new spatial material, click on that, and then change the albedo to yellow, or whatever color you want. And I'm also gonna turn the emission on uh, and set that emission to yellow uh, and the energy pretty high. Now later on, I'll see if we can add some bloom or something to it and it will look pretty cool. So that's just gonna give it some color there. I'll save that scene. Now we'll go into the player and open up the player script. Um, just before I do that though, there is a timer that I've added here. So I've gone ahead and added a timer node and then I've called it chain gun timer. Uh, and what I want to do is click that, select node and then double click timeout and add it to the script so it connects that signal up here. Now don't, don't just go ahead and type that yet because we're gonna go up the top here and we're gonna add this variable can fire equals true. It's gonna start at true. We don't wanna be starting at false. And then down here, func on chain gun timer timeout, can fire equals true. All right, now the main portion of this code is going to be in the process here. And the well, first thing we're gonna do is check to see is the player pushing the mouse button. So let's go and set up some inputs here, because currently, uh, we're just working with the default input. So you've been probably pushing up, down, left, and right on the keypad. But what I've done here is if we go project settings and then input map, we can actually add these things. So UI left, you can see I've added the key A. You just hit the plus button, select key, and then push the key that you want. A, Oop, not S, A. Okay, it was already there. And I've added D as right, W for up and S for down. So um, if you're not familiar with those and you're using this with students, um, trust me, they'll know what WASD uh, is all about. Um, so let's go ahead and add down here, player fire. You can add an action, player, player fire. Not meant to be a capital R. Add that in, mine says it already exists. Add this, mouse button, left button. You can add right button, middle mouse, X button, one, two, etc. There's a whole lot of stuff that you could add, but we just want to add that in down here. So now we can get to programming the input. So if input, this is the input library, is, uh, or the input class, is action pressed, and the action we want to check that's pressed is player fire. We also want to check that the player can fire though, and can fire. I'm going to set can fire equals false. Now, the way that this logic is going to work here is um, the longer we hold down fire, the shorter the timer is going to get. So it's going to start off pretty slow. If you've ever played uh, the really old Doom or Wolfenstein or Team Fortress 2, um, and you've played like the heavy in Team Fortress 2, you'll know that the chain gun takes a little bit of time to wind up and then it just starts firing really rapidly. So that's what we're gonna try and emulate here. So we're gonna start off with uh, it being quite slow and then it's gonna get fast. If you click on chain gun timer and select inspector, I've set my wait time to 0.3. So that's gonna be the, the difference between these things. Okay, so let's go ahead. I've also turned off auto start and turned off one shot. I think the default is off for those anyway. Um, but let's go ahead and add in the shells or the cases, sorry, and the um, tracer fire itself. So we're going to say variable new case equals, oh, and at the top here, we do need to add some other code. So let's just delete that. I forgot about this part. On ready var tracer equals preload and then the name of the resource. I called mine tracerfire.tscn from the previous one. And we're also gonna locate load uh, the scenes bullet case. 
Now, these I saved into the scenes folder. If you save them somewhere else, you'll have to have the, the you know, the folder here. So that's scenes and um, where have we got it here? Tracer fire, bullet case. No, that's, there it is. There's the TSCN bit. So that's gonna load those before the scene is loaded, but when this object is kind of loaded into memory. And so we can use those um, again. So tracer is gonna to refer to our tracer fire, case is gonna to refer to our bullet case, and we can instance these in here. So let's close that script up there. So in here, variable new case equals case.instance. So we create an instance of the case, store it in memory, and refer to it by new case. And then we're gonna set its position, new case dot global transform. Transform refers to the position of an object in 3D space. This is kind of computer graphic stuff. Um, it has an X, Y, and Z translation. It also has a scale X, Y, and Z, and it has a rotation. We're just gonna assign it to the position 3D. Equals dollar sign position 3D dot global transform. Okay, now global transform refers to the global position of it in the world space, not the local position of it in this here. If we just said global transform, it would put it to the player's global transform. If we said position.3d.get transform, um, it would put it to the position.3d transform relative to the player. It, would, it wouldn't work. Essentially, we need to get where it is exactly in 3D. So we can do that like that. And then we're going to add it to the tree. Get parent dot add child. And we're gonna add in the new case. Now what's gonna happen here? What's happening here? We create the case instance and store a pointer to it here. Then we can use that pointer to change its position. It hasn't actually loaded into the scene yet. Then we can add it to the the tree, the node tree up here. Now, what is get parent? Get parent says, well, where is the player located? Let's go back here, it's here. What is the parent level? Then we can add child to that. So it's gonna become one of these things down here. All right, that's gonna be the first part. We now need to add the tracer fire, which is gonna be the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna grab that and do it, except I'm gonna call it new tracer equals tracer.instance, new tracer, equals dot global transform, equals position.3d.transform, um, get parent dot add child, new tracer. Okay, now, reset timer. So in here, um, or change timer, not reset timer, we're gonna change the timer. So it gets a little bit smaller. So we're gonna go dollar sign chain gun, chain gun timer. What does the dollar sign do? Okay, the dollar sign, what that does, if I go back to my player script here, the dollar sign will say, okay, it's a, it's like a shortcut for get node or get child. Um, so we could type get node chain gun timer, but you can just type dollar sign chain gun timer and it will refer to uh, this here. Uh, it, it's quite handy because getting uh, different components in something like Unity is, is a little bit difficult. Um, I mean, it's not it's not too hard, but it's it's a bit frustrating and it makes your code a little bit less readable. But this makes it very readable. All we're doing is referring to the child object by the name of chain gun timer, and we're going to say dot uh, set wait time, and we're going. So I don't know what happened there, and we're going to set it to uh, the current time minus about. A few milliseconds, I guess. Uh, so let's go chain gun timer dot get wait time minus 0 0.05. Now, how do I know what all these things are? Okay, if I click on, I'll hold control and load this up here. Class timer, this is a timer. It has all these methods associated with it. We can say start, stop, is it stopped? That's gonna be true or false. Um, we can set the wait time, that's what I've done. But if I click on this, this is a float, and Godot uses setters and getters. So we can actually set the wait time with a value or we can get the wait time. You can access it just like this, but it is better practice to access it through the setters and getters 
Um, sometimes you will get, I found errors when trying to change it in here. So we do it through the setter and the getter. So I set wait time, get wait time. Going back to the script, which is here. Oh, it's here, movement. Probably not the best name for it since it deals with a little bit more than movement, but it's okay. So we're gonna set that to chain gun timer is set wait time to the current time minus 0 0.05. Uh, remember it's set to 0.3 at the moment. So it's gonna take a few kind of cycles before it gets a little bit faster. And then chain gun timer uh, dot start. We'll start that timer, which means it's gonna go down here. When it times out, we're gonna set it back to true. Now we need another if statement here. You might think, well, why don't I just use an else? The reason why will make sense in a sec. Input dot is action press. So I'm saying is not action press player five. In this case, I'm gonna set the chain gun timer uh, dot set wait time to be the chain gun timer dot get wait time plus 0 0.2. I might actually make that 0 0.1. And then we're gonna have an if statement. If chain gun timer dot get wait time is greater than 0 0.3 then chain gun timer dot set wait time 0 0.3. Now what's this doing? Um, if we go in here, if not input, you might think, why don't I just put an else statement there? The reason why is I only want it to do this if the player has lifted up the player fire button. If I just say else, it's gonna do it uh, every time because even if they're holding it down, can fire is set to false and so it's going to reset that chain gun wind up time. Um, but it's only going to reset it if the player is uh, set to false. Oh, sorry, if they're not pushing the button. Um, in which case I probably don't actually need this because there's no kind of timer on this. In fact, I could just say set the wait time back to 0.3 if they let go of it. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if this works now and it should because I've already done this code. But you can see here that the chain gun works. Okay, I've got, the longer I hold it down, the more the screen shakes, um, and it's kind of getting more wild and out of control over there. And I've got a lot of physics objects now. Um, I've probably got close to a thousand of them, uh, maybe more and it's kind of slowing down a little bit. And that's what we're going to do shortly with these visibility things, is actually delete them when they leave the scene. So currently those, um, those nodes here, these are getting deleted when they, when they delete the scene, when they leave the scene, or when they collide with the wall, they're gone. But we want to make these disabled or even limit the number that is on the screen. So later on we'll do that, but in the next few videos I'm gonna look at creating a character. Um, and this character will be able to be used for uh, good guys, bad guys, whatever you want. Um, and we're gonna do that in Blender. So if you're doing the programming in your group, you may want to uh, just kind of skip ahead a little bit, look for the next bit, or maybe start thinking about what other uh, objects you can make, maybe some power-ups, some ammo crates, and so on. Maybe consider how you could uh, implement an ammo counter. So those videos will be up shortly, uh, probably within the next week or so.